Top Sport pagrindinis Kauno Žalgirio rėmėjas. Top Sport kazino kortų lošimai, stalo lošimai, kauliukų lošimai, lošimo automatai, lažybos. Nesaikingas lošimas gali sukelti priklausomybę. Įsivaizduokit, ate apie tų metas jūs pasidarėt kavos, turit laisvą minutėlę ir norėtumant pasižiūrėti buvo pirėkščių rungtynių statistiką ir pasiklausyti žalgiriečių komentarų. Bet turime problemėlę ir jums nieko neišeina padaryti, nes tinklo administratorius blokuoja jūsų prieigą. Su mūsų draugų NordVPN programėle tokių problemų niekada neturėsite. Prisijungite ir naršykite internete nevaržumai. Tad paskubėkit įsigyti NordVPN, nes dabar dviejų metų planui net 70 procentų nuolda ir dar pakalbėjau įdomi keturi mėnesiai su kodu ZALGRIS. Tai kveskit didžiosio praeitėje. Pradedam dar vieną mūsų pick and pot tinklaldės dalį ir šį kartą, kaip ir kalbėjome pačioje tinklaldės pradžioje, Nusprendėme, kad mūsų naujasis tinklaudės produktas turės ir vieną dalį, kurioje mes su Tautų du Sabonė, Kauno Žalgirio trenerių štabo atstovų kalbinsime žaidėjus ir šiandien pradėsime nuo Edmundo Samnerio. So, I'm switching now to English for a better understanding. So, Edmund, how do you feel? How do you rate this whole setup? We have a completely new podcast setup and a new podcast called Pick and Pot. You're the first guest of it. Setup's cool. I'm seeing how this whole podcast is going to go to see the vibe, so... See how T talks. You gotta see how this. Hey, it's the first one, so it's our pilot. So we're <laughs> a little. Ru- it's gonna be a little rusty, Let's but see, hey. Man. I'm saying I'm excited to be here. Get a little com- good conversation going. Yeah. All right. Dude is gonna expand on that, but I just wanna start a story. You two played a pickup game before. Is that true? Somewhere in Indiana. We're not a hundred percent sure. I'm ninety nine percent sure. <laughs> when I was visiting Domas in Indiana, I think he was coming off some injuries. Yeah. I mean, one, the way he described it had to be me, but we played so much, but it 100% had to be me. Like, I was back in the facility the whole summer. I was the only one coming off injury, so I had to start playing pickup just to, you know, get my legs and stuff back under me. So 100% was me. He said I dined him up a few times. You got a few buckets. So, nah, I got, the thing is that I'm not a scorer or anything, but I was getting him <laughs> some good assists, and he's like, I don't remember. I was like, what? Come on, <laughs> man. I was doing the Domas DHOs. <laughs> uh, so, that's the yeah. family's thing right there. That, that, that's it. That's so actually, it. you had uh, two Domas's or two Sabonis on the court, one uh, a taller version, and uh, you had a No, Domas wasn't working out. Domas wasn't working I, out. So, all right. No, no, it was pick up, like... Like, I would have been probably playing if Domas was playing. <laughs> <laughs> probably would. Probably, <laughs> exactly. That would probably be better talent there. But, uh, but yeah, it was cool. It was cool. H- have you had a chance to play each other here, like a scrimmage type of one-on-one? No, nah, he's just been, you know, on the sideline mostly, you know. <laughs> I don't know if he want to get back on the court. I think if you shoot, y'all be doing little shooting games or yeah, something. I'm, so I, I yeah, don't, I'm not going to comment on the shoot <laughs> because I'm not doing too well. But I just know that Ed does not like the trash talking too much. Nah, actually, I love it. Because every time he trash talk, that I get I get better. Yeah, that's, so. that's the problem. Only when I talk is when he starts to play better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's something we, we, there. We're going to expand on that. T- tell, tell us about the trash talk from to this side. Is he a great A-lister trash talker or not? We need to know where he's at. I'm going to give him... A B list, but he has great timing. Yeah. Like he knows when to say it <laughs> that it like kind of catch you, and it's it's not like super loud. It's like it's enough so you can hear it, and it's real <laughs> smart. So it's like like the one day of practice where I'm yeah. I'm walking out, only I heard it, so that's why I got turned <laughs> up because really only I heard him. Like yeah, he about to get a stop now. Like so, <laughs> this is his timing is impeccable for sure. He waits to great moments and he know when to get under your skin. Yeah. T- t- would you say that you sit on Edmund Steele uh, much more than on any other player Steels? Yeah, it's between him and Keenan. It's between me and Keenan mostly. I'm always trying to. Motivate a little bit uh, K to get some good stops, but normally Keenan and him are the ones that that react to it. At least show me some kind of like okay, and then if they score, which he has, <laughs> then I hear it. Then I hear it. But then I'm a, I'm a little nervous. And I don't want coach to get all like I want the concentration level here and that. But then it's like I want him to get into it, so it's you know it's all. Do Brady's good too. Brady just keeps the same straight face. So <laughs> do you feel like is th- this is the case that y- you and Keenan are the ones that being followed the most by this guy uh yeah i can say it's probably culture wise too like we're like we're used to in the states to you know talk a little smack to each other in yeah. practice like here guys don't really like talk a little smack you know what I'm saying yeah like locked in uh 
Where, like, I mean, I feel like you can talk a little smack and be serious, but like you said, yeah. guys are lazy in because, one, like you said, you don't want Coach to feel like, oh, you guys ain't locked in, you make a mistake or something. But, like, it's like I, I enjoy it. Um, like you said, I like when he talk a little smack. Just yeah. a little salt. <laughs> you know, just throw a little salt just to see. So what big, so big. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, can you tell uh, about like the main differences in practicing in Europe and in NBA? Now you can make some comparisons. You're an experienced NBA player. Now we have uh, more than two months experience here playing in Europe. Mm -hmm. Can you say practice wise, what is the biggest difference here? <laughs> and you <laughs> we practice <laughs> literally. <laughs> we, we practice we, like, over there. You don't practice like I'm like we practice like a walkthrough. Our walkthroughs here, yeah, are way more intense than practice over there, and that's not exaggerated and nothing. Like yeah. you come in. You go either gonna walk through some clips that uh, like we watch film, but then we probably walk through some clips that maybe they want to correct. Yeah. And if we obviously probably got a game next day, so they're gonna walk through a couple more things, walk through a couple plays. All right, bring it in, and then it's like a get what you need. That's mostly every day for you, and obviously that's gonna depends on how many minutes you got, how many minutes you don't have. So if you're not in rotation, obviously they will have guys they call like stay ready, like you're a play. So them guys like you, we're getting some five on five, four on four, like you're playing, but like here, everybody's practicing. Uh, obviously they do some stuff like we may sub like say Keenan play heavy man they give him a little rest but like everyone practice here and you gotta be locked in you gotta be focused but yeah the biggest thing is like it's funny to say but like we literally practice here and you don't practice over there uh, that's that's just the biggest key so so uh, knowing that what you said uh, you have more of a coach's input here yeah you have more like a one on one talks during the practices and after the practices is that true yeah 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 uh, coach like I said I feel like this is more like College style in the sense where coaches are weight, they into everything is um, a certain way they want you to play, but it's still the freedom of your professional. But like you said, it's just way more intense uh, versus the style I've been over there. It's, it's, it's a lot more laid back. It's times where obviously your coach going to get on you, yeah. we're playing around, we're not doing something right, making mistakes. Everybody has those moments where they're, you know, getting on you and stuff like that. But here, like you said, every detail matters. Um, and again, like they're going to get on you here. That's probably like the biggest difference. Uh, today, uh, as the one who completely knows what the NBA's kitchen is, what the Europe kitchen is of basketball, do you have the task in Zalgiris uh, coaching staff to talk with the American players, maybe to help them adjust if they're coming from straight from states uh, to mean, European basketball? I, I get with the question, but like I think it's more of a natural thing. I think again, I'm I'm a little younger than the other coaches, uh, uh, being what you said, uh, being in America for a little bit. Uh, obviously, my speaking I think is better. I get there. The same vibe a little, yeah. so that kind of helped. But I'm. You can uh, share the Spotify playlist if you yeah. want. Again, that will help because my Spotify, <laughs> my Spotify list is terrible. But <laughs> but no, I feel like you know even having Domas as someone that we know mutually, it helped a little. Maybe I, I want to believe. So and then just helping him out, talking, and then how do you say that? Um, how's the, the word would be like? We can relate in a more thing, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's easier. And then you know, obviously with Keenan, K, Brady, all of the Americans. Yeah. For me, it just comes more natural than maybe the other coaches, which for them maybe with the Lithuanians easier. But I mean, Ed and Ed's been pretty solid so far. Hopefully, he still keeps putting those next extra, extra steps that he that he needs for us to stay a little healthy. But he's good. We cannot run away from the Sabonis name. You played with Domon the Sabonis. Uh, do you see some similarities between them two, characteristic wise, like uh, what what they look like as a person? I mean, they look alike for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife they knows they like, like, oh yeah, they look exactly <laughs> like. Um, uh, character wise, yeah, uh, he's a little different. He got a little different personality. You know what I'm saying it's different when you're playing on the court with somebody and he's then, your coach. So like, he's more of a a bad guy in a sense because he's yeah. a coach. Yeah. But like, that's why I, say I feel like it's easy for him to relate because he, I feel like he understands certain things and maybe where I'm coming from, but also trying to help me understand like this is the way though and I feel like you could say it's, it's easier because I can understand him probably the best out of anyone knows um and like you said I, I, it's like a comfortable like I feel comfortable around them as well like maybe me knowing Domas uh being his teammate for a while obviously Domas was a good dude yeah so I'm pretty sure he was raised right too so <laughs> that comes from me knowing like okay regardless he's going to have my best interest yeah uh, that kind of helps me Even with things I may not agree with, like, I can like, okay, listen and try to understand, even, you know, swallow your pride with things. So I feel like that's been like the big adjustment, but like he's been helping me a lot. And I was like, that's not always you just being positive, like telling me when I'm wrong uh, and just trying to accept that and kind of understand that. And I just been loving the consistency with that. And for me, when people, when people are trying to help you and obviously trying to correct you 
often. Yeah. I mean, they care. Uh, one of my good coaches told me, if somebody not talking to you a lot, not doing nothing, and obviously you're not playing perfect, that's going to say a lot. So, like I said, he's been great helping me, just yeah. trying to judge things like that. Uh, like I said, I like Doma as a teammate. I like him as a person. Yeah. Uh, he always, even when I wasn't on his team, like he responds stuff and check up on me and similar stuff like that. So I mean, Doma has always been a great person to me. Uh, do you have your favorite you and uh, Doma's moment on the court or maybe off the court that firstly comes to your head when you remember? So I don't know. Let's pick and roll with Doma because he has gotcha. probably the best hands I've ever seen from a big fella. It doesn't matter where you pass the ball, he's going to catch it. And like, I think this is why he's so good. He understands like the pocket. So like. He's always in the right spot, no matter what. Like he's always in the right spot, and he's always thinking a couple of plays ahead. Uh, so he plays one that good, he makes the game easier. So those times where I, I had one of my best years in Indy, was I'm playing off the ball, I'm able to cut because he can pass so well. So in a sense, you're just reading the game, and he's he's taking a lot of the heavy low. He's an all star and stuff like that. So I mean, playing with Domas was great. You were with Domas all three, four years? No. Yeah, because yeah. when I had got hurt, that I think that's the year he got traded. Yeah. When I got hurt, so yeah. Yeah, I was with Domas Primo. I got the, the year he got traded to Indy. That was my first year that as was well. Your first yeah. year, exactly. So you, I didn't know Domas much between it. So that year it was like a, oh snap, this guy's really good. Like that's what I was gonna say. So you saw his development from yes, like Oklahoma. Man. He didn't have a great season. Obviously rookie playing behind Russ and everything. And then you know you you see him in Indiana. Obviously my family we know that he mm -hmm. can play. Boom, we see that first year. Then the second year, you know, then the third year he finally gets in the starting lineup. He's an all-star, all that. So you saw him no, grow he to like, where he is. It was literally like every step. But it was like he was playing like 15, 20 minutes, but it was like five or six, six or seven. So you like you seen all these, but like obviously he's playing behind the bigs and he's coming off the bench at a certain point. There's only so much he can do. Yeah. He's pretty much playing perfect in 20 minutes. I've never seen like and consistently he was playing perfect. And like you say, you've seen the minutes go up, and every time the minutes, like the volume, yeah. the efficiency, like he was just expanding. And like you said, the one last year he was dominating, like. I feel like it wasn't anything he couldn't do on the floor. No one could stop him. I feel like he got fouled all the time because he was physically dominant. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Domas, like I said, he was great all around. That's why, I mean, I feel like him not being sacked with De'Aaron Fox, different style of point guard, they've been thriving. Yeah. I got one question. Just Yeah, right. I'm going to throw you a little bit on the on, on the spot right now. <laughs> you think uh, the Miles Domas would have worked with a different maybe backcourt or something? Or was it – never going to work because i have my opinion with my father because mm -hmm. we've watched all the years everybody has their opinion there's always the miles domas uh -huh. the, hey that's you know, a good one that's a good and, one. and i'm curious because you you were in that kitchen you saw yeah. it every day would it work or would it not work i felt like they had to be separated off the court out like the production for both of them was just so much better when one was on. one was off and one was on um because it was like sometimes a little spaces like miles can shoot but like it was just like weird spacing sometimes and again maybe if you gotta if Tyrese is their point guard at that time it would have been that's what I'm trying I to say I don't know like I mean, like that guy is a lead point guard so you got a lead point guard he's gonna figure out how to utilize that and at times it was working because you got Miles as being a shot blocker yeah and at the same time now you got Domas being a brute on the offensive end so they was able to help each other too uh but if, like from the team we have, what I was seeing, like, it literally seemed like they had to be one on and one off. Uh, when they were playing together, it just wasn't really as fluent. Yeah. Uh, it would work sometimes, but it wasn't consistently working all the time. Uh, and me personally, I just was like, man, they, don't Miles play so much better without Miles on the floor, and Miles was just playing better without him. So, again, I, you know, the business decision at that point, yeah. picking and choosing. And but, hey, he said he has an opinion on that. Can you say that? I think it would have worked. I like what he said. I think with like Halliburton, it, 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 it would have been a complete, it, yeah. complete uh, different style. Um, I have my opinion about Brogdon. I didn't think he was the right point guard for them for decision making, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, also, sometimes I, I might be completely off, but I feel like there was a pride thing between him and Miles, as much as they both say publicly no. And mm -hmm. uh, I know they're good friends; they're mm -hmm. good teammates. But there is something when you read or you listen to Miles' uh, uh, press conferences and he's like, I want to be a top dog, mm -hmm. I wanna, I'm, a, I'm a top center. You know, playing with Domas, it's tough because Domas rolls, he wants to roll to get some easy buckets, mm -hmm. they want him to shoot more. So I like what our coach says, Andrea is like, you got to be great, you got to be the best you can in your role. I don't know if both of them were 100% bought into doing the role they had to for the team success. Mm -hmm. 
with the NBA growing and all stars and accolades and money, obviously, you got to do your stats to get your money. Mm -hmm. I think that. I think if it was a different scenario and they both bought in 100%, mm -hmm. more likely Miles a little more because he was more put away from his mm -hmm. situation, I think it could have worked, especially if it was a different point. Yeah. No, nothing against Brogdon, but I think it was just not the right right fit my opinion yeah. no that's definitely because that's ego is the whole thing within the nba like you said they both are great dudes and yeah. you understand but in the, the day it's a business too and like you said they're both young in their career no yeah. one like like you said domas been growing every year he still was young so neither one was like okay i'm already established i'm on my third year contract exactly. i can accept this exactly. like no like this is my payday so at the end of the day like you gotta respect and i feel like miles like you're saying he was handling well too like he was still being professional, showing the day, but like you, like you said, you can hear everything. Sometimes, like he won the bigger role, uh, and it would. Well, you said right now, if Domas was on his deal now, and Miles had his deal yeah. now, they're both 27, 28 now. Maybe the whole different yeah. scenario could have worked, but for hey. sure, like you don't need great deals right now. You know, yeah. money said, like you got, you got your generational wealth. So them guys, like you said, you're a little more relaxed. Exactly. Um, like you said, you didn't. Yeah. And you can fall into the to the role a little easier, mm -hmm. and, and you care about uh, you just be like okay, I literally need to just care about winning because that's pretty much it's gonna take me to another level to add to my career is just winning. Exactly. Like you right. are who you are right now. You've been an all star. You're on your max deals. You're getting extended. Like you're like, you're locked. Your career is set pretty much. So now it's like I want to be a winner, and that's what you see a lot of guys. They say like that second and third contract. They they value winning much more than just yeah. oh I want more money in a sense. Uh, Edmund, is the pressure here in Europe different than uh, what you just said about the NBA kitchen? Like, uh, is it different what you feel when you're playing in Europe about the minutes, about the role that you play, about the connection with the head coach and so on? Because it's a new experience for you playing in Europe in the EuroLeague. How how do you uh, see that aspect of the game? Uh, I'm still learning that. Um, coming from the States, you, you still sense all that. Yeah. That pressure of wanting more minutes, uh, feeling like you need to just do more, more, more. Um, but the thing over here that's consistently value is team basketball. And, um, and if you look at stats around just the Euro League, like he has some guys that's averaging like high 18, 20, but it's not a lot. So like looking back at that, again, that's why I keep re referencing college because I played on the team. We had three, four players in double figures and scoring 15 to 20 in college. That's a lot of points because there's less possessions. You play yeah. a team ball, everyone's touching it. So like, it's a little bit less of pressure of feeling like, oh, I have to go score 30 or do this and that. I got to get my minutes. Um, but like I said, I'm just like adjusting back to that ball. Um, you know, you come over here with a certain expectation. Uh, and that's, that's just being realistic with myself. Uh, like, okay, I came over here, I got this. But then you get over here and you see what it's about and what the team actually sees your role and – and you have to see, I have to grow in certain areas. That's a humbling experience within itself. Um, you come with this, you basically feel like, I feel like I'm starting over because this style of basketball is just so much different. Uh, smaller court, uh, different philosophies. Um, but then again, I feel like step by step, like I'm grasping certain ideas. Uh, I'm still waiting for my feel good game. Yeah. Like overall, and that's not just like points or anything like that. It's just like overall game for me having a great defensive game yeah. to a, a good offensive game, like a collective five, game. Five, six rebounds, for example, can yeah. help. Five, six yeah. rebounds <laughs> can help. <laughs> Everything. Sometimes five, six rebounds can do a big difference so, for this team. Just like little stuff like that. But um, for me, I been, I like the challenges, though. Like, again, I sometimes it's definitely frustrating with certain things. But for me, what my dad is still with me is just not running from the challenge. Uh, just because it ain't easy, things ain't always going perfect for me, they ain't going yeah. – this is amazingly way that I, I expect it to go. Uh, I don't I, I don't like running from things. So I mean, that's me figuring it out step by step and it's kind of sticking with it. Uh, Say so, I mean, it's a challenge. I came over here for a reason. I didn't want to. I had the option just to stay. I could have waited. I could have played in G League, but like I wanted to come play another high level ball. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted something to push me. Yeah. Uh, and now this is a way like I'm going to be able to expand my game. I want to look back at the end of this year and say I got better throughout this whole year. Like my game has gotten better this year by playing over here. I like what you said because <clears throat> a lot of guys that come here and in general guys that come to this club or overall in Europe have this expectation what you said, like, okay, I've, I was in the NBA 
uh, role player, good player, no matter what, I'm going to come here, I'm going to score 20, 25. You know, that's, that's it. That, that's the tendency that they have. But I like how you said it. You look at guys like Mike James, you know, you look at guys like, uh, who else here? Uh, even Keenan, for example. Keenan's averaging 16 points, I think, 16, 17 points. Yeah. And that's a lot. Like, that is a lot. And, like, to guys that I've heard from other clubs that, no, oh, biggest issue was he didn't want to adapt because he wanted 20 points. Like, you ain't going to get 20 points here. I have a theory even of, like, even Luca was when he was here playing, for example, okay, he was younger and all this. 17, but, 18 years yeah, old. Yeah, but he wasn't getting those points because coverages are different, spacing, three-second rule is very important, and the NBA, that opens up a lot of mm -hmm. drives, for example, Definitely. for you, you know. So understanding that getting 15, 16 points, being efficient in those – six, seven shots is way more than, with all due respect, I'm, a guy like, I'm not a big fan of him, but like Julius Randle as an example, he's playing better right now, but he has games that he goes six for 27 or 25 shots, and he's got, you look at it at the end of the day, he's like, okay, he's got 27 points, mm. but dude, like, is that good? Right. But be efficient in making 16 points, and then in Europe, less possessions, not a lot of 100, 100, 110 yeah. points. You, that's <laughs> and who gets so many shots in Europe? Not even James does, you know, what I'm trying to say in, in that kind yeah. of sense, you know. So that's a good way of seeing it, and the sooner you realize that, like you have, it helps your game. So you have to adjust to the other math uh, psychologically. Yeah, you have to adjust that you weren't going to be a 25-plus 20, point player. There's also a good way of thinking. It's like, is everyone going to change towards you because you came from here, or is it better for you and quicker to adjust to us? Right. And then we adjust to your needs that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so that kind of like helps your process our process and at the end of the day what you said it's team success at the end of yeah the day. And don't you feel like uh, nowadays players uh, coming uh, once again uh, from nba to your league and back from your league to nba we see a uh, players coming like dante exum is the, one of the latest That's examples great uh example. vesinkov uh, he made it with the kings right now so we see players moving back and like uh, players in states they realize that your league, your league is a very strong competition, like the second strongest competition right now in the world. Adding to this, I ask you, when you came here, you you asked around probably about your league. How was the, I'm guessing you asked some players, you asked coaches, I don't know how that was. Mm -hmm. What was the questions or what was the, the your idea of coming here asking people about the Euro league in general? Because yeah. if I'm not wrong, it's your first time in Europe in general. Yeah, like Europe in general. Um, one, I was one of the, as soon as I just kind of brought up that 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 to people like yearly like like the feedback was like amazing like everyone everything was positive uh, and so many people was kind of like excited like for me to try this opportunity um, the questions really was like because you hear some of the stories about how like it is overseas like the horror stories <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying like again yeah. it was I'm dark American and cold so, like, yeah. it's, like I haven't been like it's different like you in the sense the NBA they they baby you uh, yeah. so it was. Like wrong, but I grew up in Detroit, like coaches I had then, so I, I could handle certain answers. But, like, again, I want to know about some of these horror stories, even just from, like, the money issues, like, yeah. stuff, not getting money. Like, that was my first question, like, more than anything. But <laughs> me hearing about, like, EuroLeague, it's, it's like, a, again, a little bit below the NBA, like, about it's professionalism. Like, like it's, you have no issues with any of that. Um, and even from, like, the travel and the stay and stuff, like, yeah, you, you might stay at these – great hotels all the time but again we don't stay at no two-star hotels three-star hotels like the g league i played in g league like some hotels like we on spring beds like you wake up your back is hurting like so like and even it's that's like the whole time yeah so that was kind of really the only thing and basketball wise like i already knew about like the level of competition over here like you said you got the mike james and stuff that you see uh i haven't like i wasn't watching games one of my uh, closest friends you know he always stayed in tune with that he's been playing over here overseas not euro league but like he watched all the EuroLeague games, so like immediately, that's who the person I really just was mm -hmm. having a conversation with. And he was just like, "Bro, take that experience." For me, the hardest thing literally was like the quick notice, because like I'm I'm sitting there and it's like, okay, I'm not thinking about overseas yet, uh, but I got like shifted in the back of my mind, like, all right, Ed, I'm not about to be sitting on the couch. That's just not who I am. Yeah. I'm not gonna let my ego about having to be in the NBA. Like, I love to play basketball more than me just, oh, I want to be in the NBA, NBA. And, again, like, my dad, he's, like, my partner in crime when it comes to basketball. Yeah. And, like, that's who my advice. who got me all the way to college. Like, now, like, I'm a grown man, so I make my own decisions. But, like, again, it was, like, dad, what should I do? Like, and for me, I know, like, how much he loved me being in the NBA. And for him, with not a hesitation, no question, go over there and hoop. Like, you love to play basketball. Yeah. There's no question about that. 
And it was just nothing like, so me, it was like, okay, time to pack up in two days. It was just like so much. And then it was like, oh, I got to get my baby passport. So having them having to wait, like just the quick process, was literally the only thing that almost had me like, man, like I just feel so rushed. Like I haven't have had a chance to sit down and even digest like, all right, I got to go overseas. I got to play a style of ball. Like I didn't get a chance to really grasp it until like a week over here, like to realize like, oh, man, I'm really over here. Like. <laughs> I'm not playing the NBA. So, like, that type of adjustment. But, like, everything else, like, this experience over here has been so cool, like, top to bottom, like, the good and the bad. Like, nothing's ever going to be perfect. But, like, my family, my wife, like, she, she's even enjoying it. Like, it hasn't been, like, the great experience because it's gloomy right now yeah, and it's snowing. Yeah, yeah. But like, <laughs> it's still, like, the overall everything else, though, has been, like, really good. And, again, like, it's still a great opportunity yeah. for, for me to even get an opportunity to play in a tier below in the greatest league over in Europe. Yeah. And it's like an opportunity, like, I mean, that was, that's great. And that was something I didn't want to take for granted and feel like I'm too good. So I hear a lot of guys say, like, you're too good. Like, how are you too good to go play high-level basketball? Like, that never makes any sense. Like, yeah, I'm having to go across the world. And it's tough because I'm a family guy. Like, yeah. not seeing my mom. My mom not able to see my baby right now. My, you know, my dad and I come to my game. Like, they come to, like, almost over 50% of my games when they can. Uh, when I was in Indy, they drive in every home game. Cincinnati, they was at every game for Xavier. Heist, like they don't, they don't really miss any games unless it's on far road trips. So that's that's the biggest thing. But are they gonna come visit you in Lithuania? My mom don't like flights, so okay. she won't be taking the flight. I would. My dad may or may not come. I think my sister might try to come out here. In a but couple, of what? Let's say three weeks, three weeks a month. The weather's gonna get better. Yeah, yeah. The uh, sun's gonna maybe come out a little. It's 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 not it's like you came at the worst timing. <laughs> So it's dark, That's it's the snowing. Worst you weren't here for preseason, preseason still. It was warm this this yeah. really? summer. Okay. And it was like it's green, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know? But this is That's what, unfortunately what, is the truth. Weather wise it's like what's scripted that you come to the worst yeah. possible scenario. That, it's not even the weather, because again, I'm a Michigan, so like I'm not outside walking, like that's just not me. I'm not I don't do all the cold, yeah. but like I'm it's okay right. with the it's the great right, like you wake great. up and it's like an hour, maybe a sun, yeah. and then it's just great for the rest of the day. So like you just sit and you're like I look at my phone, it's 3 o'clock. I'm like, <laughs> man, it feels like I'm supposed to be getting ready for bed. So, like, that's really only been the hardest part. So, I definitely feel like once the sun yeah. comes back out and stuff like that, it's only going to be better. We have this article in December that we had only of nine eight hours, nine, nine, nine hours of sunny, sunny, sun all shining. December. Yeah, all December. Of all of December. Oh, nine all hours total? Total. Yeah, not See, in a I day. See, I knew I wasn't saying, <laughs> I knew I wasn't crazy. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, Edmund, uh, going uh, to our second part of, uh, of the conversation, what was your frustration moment, first frustration moment during the game here in Europe when you thought about, damn, what the hell is that shit? Oh, I got one. I probably know one. All right, all right. Uh, was it a call? Was it uh, something that you encountered on the court? Oh, like something with like in the game? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. During first? the game, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I, don't, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that's been frustrating. <laughs> I got two, actually. I got two for her. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, which was you I got the, uh, the frustration moment for you was probably when I the other day I'm like you gotta take a foul oh yeah I'm like what do you mean I'm like dude we got fouls to give it's a mismatch no it's not I'm like it's a mismatch no it's not he didn't score on me <laughs> nine times out of ten he'll score on you he ain't gonna score on me I'm like okay fine don't do the foul but dude came back in first thing he did took a foul so respect for that And then the second one, maybe, I don't know, this is, I heard it on the bench. It's just a suggestion, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but it was against Asvel in, in, in France when we were playing, and uh, you got a, you came in the third quarter, I think it was, okay. and you got a foul, a Paris Lee got a foul on you or something, uh -huh. and you're telling the refs, oh, this is not a foul, and this is not a foul, and Paris Lee walks by you, he's like, this ain't the NBA, bro, this is Europe, I don't know what. <laughs> and I see me looking at him like, what? <laughs> So that was that was I probably wasn't a frustration moment, but I remember yeah. hearing that. I remember seeing your face. You're like, damn. <laughs> yeah, that that was right. The take file, the following. Yeah, it's definitely it's just so different that I'm not used to just. It's a wait, a completely filing. new thing. Yeah, like, and then especially like when I felt like he said, like, oh, he didn't score on me, but then again, when you kind of rewind, you look over the the whole pick the big picture of the thing yeah. where he's trying to explain is like. But this is the way we do it over here. And yes, he may not have scored on you yeah. this possession. And maybe it's somebody else, though, who can score more efficiently and they get a, a bucket where, where I could have prevented by just taking a foul. And my sense is like, okay, 
my mind. I've been getting, I've been jinxed by these files, you know. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I gotta take this file. Then all of a sudden, what well, if I'm running down? I cut somebody, mm -hmm. throw a pass. Like one time, I was just going past somebody. He decided to throw the pass as I'm going, but I hit his arm because I'm running past. Yeah, it's a silly foul, right? But it's like, boom. If I just took a foul, now I got two. Now I gotta sit on the bench for the rest yeah. of the half. But so that's like my American in me, like not understanding that part of it. Yeah. Uh, but so to stop you there, like the Europeans, everybody, <laughs> it's always the same conversations. Like if I take a smart foul and then I get a stupid foul, I gotta go to the bench. But the fact is, if you don't take the, the good foul, you're still gonna go to the bench, you know? So at the end of the day, it happens. But it's the same common denominator. Everybody says the same thing, you know, in yeah. those situations. Yeah, man. And then some of the fouls, like, you know, some of them I feel like I'm foul. I'm starting to understand, okay, what is the actual foul over here? Call's not always the same. Yeah. No. Um, like in the which, NBA also. Yeah. Different you know refs, different rules. And guys, different rules, you know what yeah. I'm saying, they, they flop a little bit over here. The guards, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. A lot. And they get they get some calls. I'm a new guy. So that's another thing. I feel like once you like feel like you start over, like you got to literally um, re-earn your respect yeah. for everything. Like if that's them – Learning how you play defense. Yeah. Okay, he's an aggressive driver, this and that. So it's like, again, like you got to earn your respect for everything. And one, I didn't, again, I came over here already, like, removing my ego. Like, so it's not like, oh, I'm this NBA guy. Like, man, I really don't care. Like, Clean it was a blessing. Did. Like, yeah. that's, it is what it is, but it's a whole different thing. Um, even people over there, they expect, like, thinking, like, oh, yeah, go over there, man, go average 30. I'm like, bro, don't nobody average 30 over here. Like, <laughs> and what do you think? They're like, I'm I'm getting thrown into a team in the middle of a season, which is tough. Like they already have, we already have their like Keenan is is our best player right now. So like I don't need to come over. Oh, I'm in the NBA. This is gonna be my team. Like that was never what I'm thinking. Okay, I'm following. Like he's gonna lead. Like okay, whatever I need to do for this team to help. So like I feel like maybe some guys you had an ego was like, well I've been in the NBA, so this should be my team. Like I just take all the shots. Like no, he got he's been having it going like. Why not keep feeding off that energy? Like, he's playing extremely well. Yeah. Like, that is just straight up selfish as a human, like, to come over there with that. And, like, Keenan's a great dude. He don't even carry himself that way. When this game's where I'm feeling it, he's telling me it takes like he's finding me. So, like, someone like that who doesn't even have an ego, who's playing extremely well, it's easy to fall back. Like, you got, like this is your team, bro. Like, I'm going to follow in your direction. So, whatever it is, and I ain't need no coach to tell me that or anything like that. Like, that's just – who I've always been like I've always played with other good players so I have no issue like his just because he's shining don't mean I can't shine and one once we start really winning we're all going to look good anyways yeah so that's always a key who like losers like like yeah. so if he's going to you losing I'm like okay you losing bro like so that's always my mindset I feel like that's how I got to the NBA as Xavier nobody expected us to win we're a top five team in the country who's who's playing and why this team is top five so you look at the roster and you see that like I honest to God, I feel like that's how I got to the NBA. Like, understanding winning is the key to everyone's success. And, again, I wasn't our leading scorer. Trayvon Blue was our leading scorer. Like, Trey, just your team, you average 18. Like, yes, I'm a fair on mine. I'm going to get it going. I'm, when it's my games, I'm going to have my games. So, like, that's kind of been my same approach over here. Like, yes, I'm still trying to find my rhythm with everything, the flow, and I have to get better at things and continue, again, to – let my pride go. There's times I'm human too. It's time I let my pride get to me sometimes, but it's an adjustment within that. Uh, and again, this experience has been, been good to me. And I honestly feel like this is going to help me for whatever direction it is. If I get back in the NBA, I get back in the NBA. If I don't, I mean, you're like, it is what it is. And I'm going to just, I've been just kind of riding this wave and just trying to just focus on this year. How can I get better this year for Zagreb, for this team, and help us win games? Whatever that is, it is what it is. Man. Those were some of the words. So, so nice to hear. So nice to hear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to the final part of the questionnaire. Uh, you played in the basketball city in Indi Indiana, Indianapolis. You played now for the other basketball city, Konas. Uh, can you compare some somehow, like the atmosphere-wise, the fan mm -hmm. base-wise? Do you do you see like crazy fans here? You can compare those with the Indianapolis fans. Uh, one, no, the fans are here. Are like extremely, they, they're extremely crazy here. Like, I get so much love here. First of all, every game is sold out. And Indy, you know, we had like a little couple of rocky years where the people, you know, are mad, you're losing some games. But I would say like that first year when Domas and everyone came, went to the playoffs, 
that whole year was like the greatest experience. That's when you guys lost in the game seven. To Cleveland. To Cleveland where it was, goal it was a block. It was a block. I mean, yeah, it was a goal ten. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, LeBron, I, LeBron, LeBron on. Like, on you look at the video. He literally yeah, went. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. they gave him the benefit of the yeah, doubt because yeah. he's LeBron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again. It's not even me being biased. We still have been, bro. Like, that. I'm not remember. lying. Like, that was, like, that year was amazing. Like, seeing that playoff experience just from top to bottom, seeing, like, okay, in a sense, underdogs, because you got a group yeah, of guys. Yeah. You said people didn't believe in Domas. People didn't, they gave Vic as a number two pick. He got traded three times within yeah. four years. That doesn't happen. Yeah. So, you got all these people giving them, it's like, oh, it's Indiana. Ah, they're going to be bottom team. For us, we finished, I think, top six or top five. Yeah, you're fifth, I think. Yeah, right? I think five. Fifth. Yeah, and then. Take Cleveland in Game Seven again against LeBron, who he had like four amazing performances that literally won the game. A buzzer beater, a couple forty. It's like, LeBron, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then again, if you take LeBron out of the picture, anybody else, they call goal ten and you review it because it's the last second shot. Yeah. So even if it's not a goal ten, they you know they get the ball. Yeah. But again, you give the benefit of the doubt because who he was. Uh, so I feel like. Both of those states have been really good. Even the Indy, like, because I, I live in Indy past, like, even though I got off the Pacers, I go to the store, stuff like that. Fans still come up to me, show me so much love. Uh, if that people write me when things maybe didn't go well for me. Uh, fans have been amazing here. Like, everywhere I go, people, you know, ask and take pictures, stuff like that. Uh, the words have been nice. I just love the atmosphere. Like, we lost, what, four or five EuroLeague games in a row, and we still were selling out. And then the fans come and rally and tell us that, they're still behind us. Like, that, that to me, that's cool. Like, that shows nothing but love. It's like, it's easy for them to be like, all right, y'all not winning. Like, we not, I'm not about to come keep spending my hard-earned money to watch you guys not play well. And we're losing dumb ways, too. Like, I, I can understand their frustration with that. But the love and support to continue to come and do that, like, that shows how much they love ball and care about this team and city. And I feel like that kind of – that makes you want to play well. Yeah. Although, as a, like, human, like, we're a team, like, I want to win every game, like, no matter what. But to have the fans behind you and stuff like that and always having their support and now, oh, we dropped one now. We're about to have 50% people here. Like, just knowing that, that's been that's been amazing here. I think the main message for the fans is that you have to fight every game. Yeah. Even though you lose, even though you have a sucky game, shitty game, if you fight till the end, fans will love that. Even though you have, like you mentioned, five losses in a row. It's, it's it's the motto of the team. You have to fight. If if the fans don't see the spirit, they're gonna see it for the fir they're gonna see it first. Mm -hmm. First, yeah. People it, understand basketball here, you know, more or less. Maybe not all X's and O's, but there's a different perception of basketball here. So, you know, even again, switching and stuff like this. There's normal people that understand that where the ball has to go mm -hmm. to, you know. And it's like you got to do this, you got to do that. And what he says, if you try. They ain't gonna kill you for it. They're gonna mm -hmm. hate for a moment, you know. But, but I want to ask you, what about the loudness of the arena here and the loudness in the arenas in the NBA? Yeah, uh, cause we're going to the arena now. Yeah. To we're going to Serbia. Yeah, ours is loud, like that. but that yeah. that that's loud too. I don't think no NBA arena is gonna be like that because most of them are like filled with people that just want to watch the game. Yeah. But one again, we go back to that playoff series. That's the loudest I probably ever heard. Okay. In the arenas, because consistent, like they all in tour. These games mean everything, so you get pretty loud. Um, a couple of times in Brooklyn, the arena got really loud. Uh, but it's a lot of games where it's just like some runs, you get out, but it's like it's cool. It might be a lot of people in there. Game selling out, especially if you playing with some superstars. Every game is selling yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, but here, like all the fans are cheering, like. The whole game, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so that's But different. This also comes to the fact that, let's say, for example, in the NBA, there's 82 games. There's a lot of games that are just fill up, fill, yeah. fill games. Like you know, and here, it's every like, game matters. Every game, it's our, it's the Euroleague slogan. It, you, you can feel it by, yeah. by, by now. And you only got eight spots in the playoffs. Okay, you got to play in this year. It's the first thing that you got t to tenth. Mm -hmm. Being realistic, 17 wins gets you to the to the play in. Last year was 17. It was tenth place. So. You can't afford not to, mm -hmm. to to support your team. So if you think about it, you get 17 home games. 17 makes you the plan. So fans want you to win those games to have the chance. Okay, you win five, six away games. Mm -hmm. You win 16 home games. You're at 23. Yeah, you're a playoff team. You know, so yeah. people here understand this, and this is why you gotta bring it every fucking time. No, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense too. When you definitely put it that way, because like you said, having that those type of crowds like. You have to use that to your advantage. Like, some players love to play in the moments, but again, like having the point where, like, when you can't hear your teammates sometimes because it's so loud, like, 
that mess with people's head. Like, so again, like we have to use that to advance. And again, this is my first time going down to Serbia, which I've heard it's is crazy. crazy. Like, yeah. so then again, so I'm going to experience that uh, atmosphere and stuff like that. But I mean, I've, I've been loving these arenas. Uh, just fans being into it. And I love the fact, like you said, like they understand basketball, though. Yeah. Right. It's certain fans that's just like sometimes that just don't understand things. Yeah, of course. And like, it's it's okay to be mad when your team's not performing well in certain aspects, but like just some of the things that just doesn't make sense basketball wise, and you're just mad about something that's like, bro, you really don't understand what's going on right now. And yeah. I don't know if you're just, you're just literally just watching the watch, so you don't really understand any scheme and stuff like that. Even sometimes, like you said, like they don't understand like when the teams are switching or what coverage sometimes we may be yeah. in switching. But it, and it's more so I'm talking about the states. Like they don't understand certain stuff. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't understand if we supposed to be switching one through five and boom, two players come together, somebody slipped, and they get open lip. They don't understand like we were switching that somebody else fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they wouldn't yeah, understand yeah. that. Like they sc- scream something else stupid at you or just it'd be a lot of unrealistic stuff over there yeah, in the yeah. NBA and. But that comes with the territory. Um, sure. Like, I I never let that too much that stuff get to me. Like, I got a model for myself, especially, like, with social media. Like, until the day I respond to everything somebody said positive to me, I won't ever engage another negative. I don't care what you say. Like, I will never respond to you. I will never do that. There's too many people in this world that have said something nice to me that I haven't got back to. Yeah. So just because you got under my skin. Like, don't wrong. We are human. Somebody may say something. You're like, man. <laughs> but, again, I'm not about to give you – the response that you want, because that's all you want. Like yeah. most or of the time, they just want the response. Uh, that's the what you call the. Uh, oh, I forgot the word that is uh, the ecstasy of getting him to dopamine. say yeah. dopamine. That's it. The dopamine is like oh, I got him to say something. Because most when you see it, they they respond back. Oh, bro, I just wanted you to respond or something like a lot of those guys. And again, I get, I get on the small scale. Yeah. So I you got from the domas to the Kevin. Like all these guys are just being trolls to you all the time. Like. So I commend these guys with, like, some respect to even just have, like, and it's, I don't want to even call it tough skin, bro, because it's just annoying sometimes. It'd be like, bro, I just had 20 and 12. You mad I didn't get 15 rebounds? Yeah. Like, like yeah, the guys, on, the, like, yeah. team one, who cares? Somebody literally, I remember, like, not my last year, but the year I was with the Pacers, and I had a really good game. I had, like, back-to-back 20-point games, but, like, I didn't make it three that game. He said, dang, bro, you're going to score 20-something, but you can't make it three? Bro, we got to win. Yeah, I missed yeah. like three shots. I'm like, like what, what are we really talking but, about but right now? you have to realize it's only like 1% of the fans who, that, yeah. who go directly to yeah. DMs and they write something. And that's to, why I don't like yeah. – because that's, that's – I feel like it's a disgrace to people that's, that support you no matter what. Yeah. People that's showing you love yeah. on the picture that's literally – that's not getting a response. So, yeah, sometimes I try to go out my way to at least respond to someone or just, you know, tell them I appreciate it. Like, I see it. I love it. Like – is love because sometimes everybody human like it's not I need a little pick me up like that's just that's just a human nature sometimes and it don't go unnoticed so again all the negative stuff like yeah it comes with it like you play bad you know you play bad like okay I don't need to respond to you yeah I play bad whatever like it is what it is but I bet you there's another fan over there that's telling you yeah okay you might not have played well but I know I know you st- you're good like it's fans that games where I didn't have to play well here they Come on, eh? We believe in you, bro. Like we know you're gonna do better. So like, just stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, you can be honest with me. Like that's not, that's never been the case with me. But like, it's a way to address it too. At the same time, one, I don't know you personally anyway, so yeah. there's a certain way that you should address it. But I've been. That's why I said the fans here have been amazing, and I really haven't had too many bad encounters. The best part is when the fan writes something like hateful, and then after good game. It, on the same chat, he writes something good, like, oh, man, come on, that's a good game. Oh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we didn't uh, touch all the topics we wanted to touch with you, Edmund, so maybe it's for the another show in the future, I but know, it's been great to have you here. We're going to have to charge y'all now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, man. No, I appreciate thank you guys. You.